Hello everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I would like to share with you all my final thoughts on the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 31 Large. That's the model name. The specifics to this knife are Magna Cut, Sand Polish, Gold, Double Lug, and Accent, <laughs> or Bronze, but they refer to it as Gold. This particular variation I got on DOT Trading the price of it, and I'm going to tell you guys now, this was a very expensive knife. So if this is something that is not in your price range and you just, just, you're here just to hear me ramble. Welcome. <laughs> this thing was $580. That is before taxes. Uh, I don't know if there's any way to avoid taxes, but... For me, at least, it was just under $60. So uh, if you can do that basic math, because I can't, because I'm an idiot, that's a lot of monies. That's a lot of uh, dinero for sure. Um, this is a very expensive knife. Do I think it's worth the money? Do I think that there's, you know, over, like, what, near $650 around there? Is this a $650 knife? No, absolutely freaking lutely not. Is it a incredible knife? Is it awesome to use? Is it just sick to own? Yes, 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 and yes to all of them multiple times. This is an awesome freaking knife. I love every bit about it. I have zero regrets in buying it. Was it a smart financial decision? Absolutely not. No one should ever have, no one, no one needs anything like this. Um, you are more than fine having uh, something significantly more affordable than this. You can be happy and content. And if you're talking about utilitarian purposes, you could find some incredible stuff around $50. I'm talking like under what the taxes cost for this freaking knife. Um, but besides all that stuff we're gonna talk about what this thing actually is how it's been to carry to use the basic maintenance we'll take the weight we'll do six size comparison size knives out of my collection and we'll just ramble on and that's that's really what what my content is for if you're here for it well just stick around and i hope you enjoy it so let's start with the weight a little lanyards on there i said i was gonna remove it when i did my unboxing but i didn't i just do I like it there? No. Do I mind it there? No. 4.7, honestly, kind of impressive for the fact that there is zero internal milling. That's one thing that I've never been the biggest fan about because this is basically like a metal sandwich, a foldable metal sandwich. There is no internal milling, but the slabs of titanium that they use are more than robust and thick enough to allow for milling, internal milling, to make this thing a little bit lighter. And honestly, I think a lot of people would actually prefer that. I don't mind it, but I definitely notice it in the pocket, in hand. It feels freaking awesome. I love using this thing. But I will say that for what this thing costs, a little bit of internal milling would be kind of nice, right? Just, just it'd be kind of nice. Let's do some size comparison size knives now. We got six to go. We'll start with the big boys. This is a full tie MSI. <clears throat> Those scales are from Original Goat. And hopefully soon, hopefully soon, they will release uh, some, Original Goat will hopefully release their titanium scales for the lightweight Manix too. That's what this model is, this is a Rex 45 DLC freaking love this thing uh, I know a lot of people recently have been having issues with the GP knives exclusive the uncoated or even the coated ones um, they went on super sale around 4th of July and for whatever reason um, I think that batch that was made for GP knives or whoever it was specifically made for um, I think some tolerances were a little bit off because people were complaining about like ungodly side to side play i feel it on mine the tiniest bit if i really you know wiggle it i have the pivot cranked on all the way and the action is still 
wonderfully snappy. I also trimmed my spring by like a coil and a half. That's just something I do. Um, and I, I love the, the overall experience of it. So, I mean, your mileage may vary. Maybe getting some uh, higher quality scales will help with side to side rigidity. So I would definitely, I, I wouldn't advise returning or trashing your uh, Mannix 2. I'm sure it still has plenty of use even if you're not gonna like hard use it or anything like that. Uh, this is a CMB Main Knives Predator, a medium sized knife in my opinion. Another medium sized knife is the Civivi Vision FG. As you can see, both of those are, I wanna say significantly shorter, but definitely shorter than this guy overall. Here we have the beautiful Native 5 by Spyderco and the FT2103 super budget free tiger knife. This is this is something that I would say that like anybody should own something like this. This thing was like 30, 35 bucks. You can lose this thing and not shed a single freaking tear because you can get it on Amazon. It's like two day shipping or something like that. Um, I mean, it may be different for wherever you're living, but that's all somebody really needs. Nobody really needs anything like that. There's no reason for this to exist. But the reason why this exists is just to show the, the engineering quality, the fit and finish and the tolerances overall of what the company can produce. Now this is a super, super bare bones, basic bitch variation of what they could ever put out. Anything simpler than this would just be with the silver studs, a single-sided stud and a non-colored little backspacer and lanyard pin right there. So this is basically as, as simple as it gets. This is a base model, no inlays, no fancy uh, graphic or anodization. Now, the one thing that is a little I guess fancy about this, but you don't really pay much for it. Um, these scales actually have a sand polish, or I think it was a glass polish or some sort of, they're, they're using a different media. So it's a little bit more reflective. It's less uh, prone to snail trails like the typical finish, which I believe is like a sand blast or something. I've experienced that sand blast. It's very chalky in hand. Um, I like it, I don't mind it, but this just looks a little bit more refined. I feel like this really does fit the part of the knife overall. It's very beautiful looking, but of course it's just the tone, so it's a visual thing, which means that it's just a personal preference, right? <clears throat> so the experience, as I mentioned earlier with this thing, uh, has been just wonderful. I had the small 31 and it was, yes, small, this large. I wouldn't call it large. This really does feel like a standard size knife in hand. And while I love smaller knives, like I'm talking about like this, this is what's in my pocket right now. I've been beating on this thing for a while. This is a, what's it called? The Acorn from Vosti. They have a mini and this is already small enough, but this is, this is the stuff that I love using. This is like a $50 knife. You might be able to find a little bit cheaper on super sales here and there. Uh, expect that during like the holiday season that's right around the corner. But that's a freaking great knife over there. Um, it's also like 50 bucks. It's small, but that's probably a little bit larger than the small 31. Now this guy, um, I wouldn't say that it's a huge knife by any means. It's definitely something that you notice in overall weight and length, yes, but it's not like ungodly, like lengthy, where it's just unwieldable in the basic day-to-day -day use. Now, in my line of work, I go through a lot of cardboard and plastic. I'm not doing anything super crazy. I'm not doing anything, like I don't, I'm not a contractor, or construction worker. I don't have a crazy job that, you know, demands you know 80 hours of unpaid overtime or you know like that's that's not me that's not what i do will this knife hold up to it yeah probably and you know what a lot of other things that cost nowhere near this can hold to the jobs like that just fine but what you're paying for here as i mentioned are the materials the execution uh really i think at this point now with the pricing 
I personally believe, yeah, you are kind of paying for the name at this point. Um, maybe like 80 to 100 bucks. I think this thing is, is a little, is overpriced by about 80 to 100 bucks. That's just me. I'm a cheap ass fool and I don't think that this thing is, is worth what they asked for it. I think that if it was just like 500 bucks for this basic model right here, I'd be like, yeah, hell yeah, go for it. That's a sweet pickup. This is, you know, small batch, some of the best fit and finish and tolerances that money can buy without being like full custom, like extra, extra small batch. I'm talking like a two, three man team or woman, doesn't matter. Um, you know, in a small little shop, like, no, this is Chris Reeve Knives. Like they have, it's a huge company, not a ginormous corporation, but it's a very good, healthy sized company where they have the ability to pump these things out a little bit faster now than when I was first introduced to the brand about six or seven years ago. Now, uh, I wanna talk about Grail Knives there have been a couple people in the comments section when i've shown this uh this particular model off that this would be their grail and i will say that everybody has a different definition of what a grail knife is some people will say that oh the absolute most insane craziest one off like the worth of a freaking mortgage um uh, or, you know, a down payment on a house. I meant to say not a mortgage. Mortgage could be all over the place. But, you know, something that's worth a down payment on a house, that's a grail knife. Yeah, that is a more than valid uh, definition of what a grail knife can be. Or it could be something that is, is one-off, handmade. Or it could be something that was made by your best friend or somebody who you, who you love in the community. If I, had a, if I had a friend who, you know, over time, you know, I... I got to spend a lot of time with them and they, they made knives and they, they end up making something super custom and they gift it to me. That would be the king of my collection. That would be my grail knife because I look at it at as a definition of a grail knife, something that is very special. It doesn't have to be the most expensive thing. It could be, you know, it doesn't matter really the price range, right? It can't be something that's easily replaceable. That's the thing. If somebody gifted me something and it was a one-off thing, um, well, if something ever happened to that particular unit, I'm sure they could make another one, but it wouldn't be the same. So that's what I consider to be a grill knife. It doesn't matter the price. The price doesn't matter. Everybody's budget is completely different. Is this something that I should have bought in my particular financial circumstance? No, I didn't need to buy this. It was not a good idea, but I did it because I was willing to risk it for the experience to have it. And now that I have it, I don't regret it one bit. But if I did, I could very easily turn around and sell it for, I could probably get back like, honestly, like 90% of what I spent on it because I got all the original stuff, it comes in the box, the uh qc card um it still has a lanyard attached to it because you know this thing is like at least a hundred dollar value right and the box is about 150 fifty dollar value so <laughs> just poking fun at the people who care about that stuff right but um that to me that's 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 going back to the whole grail thing that's what i believe a grail knife is uh you know years ago when i first heard about chris reeve knives i was just like holy shit why is that so expensive? It doesn't make any sense to me. There's no way in hell I'll ever get something like that. And then I started seeing more and more people talk about it and I started lusting for it. I started wanting to get um, this or at least have the opportunity to know what it feels like. Maybe not even own it, but just know what it feels like to, to understand the hype around it. Is the hype real? Is it worth it? Yeah, to me, to me it is. But maybe at one point I considered this to be my grail before I finally decided what my current definition of grail is. I just thought at one point it was the most expensive knife that your money could possibly buy. That is your grail knife. But um, this to me, now that I have it, this is something that I lusted after six, seven years ago when I first started the hobby. And now that I have it in hand, it's not as crazy as i thought it would be i'm not saying that i 
am let down by any means or I was disappointed or this falls short of anything that I thought it would be, I didn't know what to expect because I've never experienced anything like it. But now that I have it on in hand and I own it and it's mine, now I can say that it's an awesome tool. It's a wonderful knife in a category damn near all its own. But it's not the end all be all. It really isn't. Uh, so for anybody out there who has never had the experience of having one of these, keep your expectations, and this may sound a little negative, but keep your expectations a little bit more, a little lower, a little bit more realistic because this is, again, a wonderful knife, but it's not without its little quirks, right? Uh, one thing that you hear a lot are the, is the design of the studs. Yeah, they're shit. They're absolutely uncomfortable, You, but you know what? It's super easy to replace them. You do need a couple little tools. It's something that I'm gonna do now that I've decided this is gonna stay in my collection uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, so this may not be around forever, but for now it's it's here to stay. So um, I'm probably gonna end up like grinding off the one side, popping out stuff from the other and getting some like tie connector studs, just something with a larger flat surface area, just so I could be able to more comfortably uh, roll this thing out. And that's another thing too. You hear from people all over the place, oh, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to flick Chris Reeve knives because it, it messes up with, with the lock geometry. You mean to tell me that one of the most coveted brands, US manufacturers out there, the pinnacle, the standard for tolerances in US production knives, for the longest period of time, you mean to tell me that they can't stand to be flicked because something will happen to it? Yeah, no. Don't believe that. These things could be these things could be flicked just fine and nothing's gonna freaking happen to it. Now the way that the detent is set up, it is the Chris Reeve inter uh, detent ball in <laughs> something uh, interface thing that they have it's uh they basically have a giant freaking uh decent ball marble looking thing that is actually uh inset into the lock bar and it's set in a way kind of like how gemstones or diamonds are inset into jewelry it's a very similar technique how they how they work the metal to kind of pinch the the I guess the jewel or the detent ball, you know, that you know we're referencing here. Um, so it's a very sturdy thing. It's not something that you know is forever. And like nothing's ever going to happen to it. Uh, there are horror stories of people cracking them, of getting damaged. But um, Chris Reeve has a wonderful uh, warranty. I'm sure it's a limited warranty. But as long as you're not like messing around with it or trying to change out the detent ball yourself, you probably won't void that warranty. You can send it in and in however long it takes for their turnaround time, I'm sure they can get back to you just as brand new. They also have a, like a spa treatment service where if you just have a unit that's just absolutely just ran through and beat to shit, you know, like large marks on the blade or just like, just big scrapes and scratches all over the scales and the clip or maybe some like chewed up looking hardware, I'm sure that they could be able to uh, get your unit back to you and back to work because that's what these knives are meant for these are not something to be um, Necessarily Babied you don't want to abuse them. I mean, this is still a folding knife You're not going to be doing inappropriate things like trying to like chop tree down or pry <laughs> pry open doors or things like that um, This is just this is knife. This is definition of knife. It's just to the highest standards for U.S. production knives, right? And it's just very different from U.S. custom, full custom, semi-custom, things like that. Um, so yeah, there's a little little ramble there, but this isn't without, like I mentioned earlier, without its quirks. The studs, they're uncomfortable. There are plenty of different things you can do with that. The hardware itself, they don't utilize standard torques, which is kind of annoying. They do include an Allen key, with every knife that requires it, they do include this dinky little shit Allen key. Uh, but the downside to it is that 
this isn't all that you need to actually take apart and maintain the knife. You're going to need a second one. Why? Well, because you need two to prevent it from spinning on the other side. Everything is rounded on this thing. There is nothing that's captured, D-shaped, or you know, like I said, captured. Um, it's not a foreign technology. It's not a new fad or concept. There are plenty of other companies that do captured um, pivot uh, or barrel fittings and all that kind of stuff. It's possible to do it. They just don't. That's just something that I feel like maybe if they did things like that, it would justify the price because there's a little bit more intricacy going into it when it comes to the fitment, but also the ease of maintenance. If this is something that's meant to go to work and to be hard used, it's going to get gross and gunked up. And even though it has a wonderful uh, a phosphor bronze washer and bushing system within the pivot, allowing for a very tight and like zero access to damn near really any sort of like gunk or grit, it can still happen over a long period of time. So eventually as an owner of something like this or really any other knife, you should be allowed to take it apart comfortably with ease and without really having to have any other specific tools. And I'm not saying that it's proprietary hardware, but um, I'd say that if they did have something that was machined in a way to capture them so that you really only need the one little Allen key to take it apart if they want to continue using, you know, their hex or, you know, Allen key uh, faced hardware, that's something that they should probably think about doing in, you know, future editions of this knife because I feel like this thing is still kind of stuck in the past. The only thing that has brought this thing up to modern standards is the blade material that they're using and their execution of the heat treat. <clears throat> so this is Magna Cut, and this is probably the single most incredible example of Magna Cut I have ever experienced so far. Now that sounds pretty bold. I have only had maybe like five or six knives in Magna Cut that I've uh, reprofiled or sharpened or had to take out like major burrs or chips or something like that, you know, through my own personal personal collection so that's just kind of my current thought process right now is really the most incredible thing about this knife is the blade material the way it was executed mainly talking about the heat treatment of the stuff so they have it i believe between 63 64 which is the higher end of the current industry standard which is like well, like 61 to 63 something like that not many people are getting it anywhere near 64 i'm willing to bet and if i was able to get a hold of somebody that was willing to hardness test this particular unit just so i could have uh you know the peace of mind and speaking about it a little bit more confidently this feels like really hard stuff, like really, really hard. This was actually a very difficult knife to reprofile. Um, the actual cutting edge itself, one side was just a little, little bit off versus the other. Not the end of the world, not a big deal. Uh, this thing, I mean, is damn near perfect for what it is. But when it comes to, you know, certain elements that are handmade elements, you can't expect absolute machine precision perfection so that was really the only thing i noticed with this particular unit and along with you know my sharpening experience of other the other uh, chris reeve knives that i've experienced as well um the actual cutting edge itself just isn't spectacular by any means they do a like a rounded edge i think it's called like a convex edge and it's just not really good the execution of it, it's it's not good to begin with. And it's it's so weird. I hear this a lot. And, and I mean, not just through my experience, but I hear this from a lot of other channels. People in the community that have experienced far more stuff in this territory and above that have said the same thing. There are people who make knives. Those people typically do not sharpen knives. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because when you're spending so much or maybe 
you know, just talking about like, if if I learned one day to to make knives at one point, I would think that the most important thing were to be to learn how to sharpen it. Um, yeah, it's just it. I, I I find that ringing quite true with my experience so far with Chris Reeve knives. This is my third uh, unit from their company, and every every one that I've had, the factory edge just wasn't. It's it's just not it. It's not great. And if you're not if let's say you're somebody who saves up a bunch or sells a bunch of uh, knives in their collection for the opportunity to own something like this and you get it and you go to use it the edge isn't gonna last for shit so that's just kind of how it is and if you're not comfortable with sharpening or reprofiling harder blade material maybe a little scary it might be a little sketchy right and it was for me a little bit because i was genuinely caught off guard when i went to sharpen this i was just like ah yeah, damn, this stuff is hard, like hard, hard. Um, but it was also impressive, right? It was impressive that they got it to the HRC that they're getting, which is awesome. <clears throat> so I'm losing my voice a little bit. Just been yapping all day. Um, so that's that's it. That's what I believe. You know, the only modern part about this. Everything else just kind of seems to be just still kind of stuck in the past a little bit. I will say that maybe the refinement of the the blades themselves the bushings and the washers i think that they may have gotten a little bit better when it comes to their finishing work making sure that surfaces are like super smooth super precision and flat um uh, precise i meant to say sorry not precision so I feel like this particular unit broke in a lot faster and has got into that super silky smooth stage that everybody wants their, you know, fresh unit to be at as soon as possible. It takes time. As I mentioned earlier, I've, I've had this for almost a month now. And by the time you guys saw my unboxing video, or if you have or haven't, but I had already had the knife in pocket for about a week by the time I released that video just because of how the scheduling is when it comes to releasing videos or posting them i get lazy i do and i don't post things the day that i record them sometimes so sometimes i go weeks without freaking recording anything this i have a very busy life i have to work my life away just to be able to afford stuff like this that's my situation right everybody's situation is different but i will say that you you you're gonna wanna have to want the the general shape or you're gonna wanna like actually want the knife to be able to justify to yourself that something like this is worth it. And I have always done that. Ever since, you know, when I first saw them, heard about them, and I was just like, I, I, I need to understand what makes these things so damn special. Now that I own the one that I had always wanted and chased after, yeah, it's a pretty special knife and I'm very happy and, you know, grateful for the opportunity of owning it um but it's not something to beat down doors for at least not anymore and you know what you don't have to anymore because they've actually caught up with production for the most part and they frequently drop on plenty of retailers which is awesome so while this particular variation may not come around for another what six months to a year um there's nothing special about this thing keeping it from ever being made again the only ones that are like special one-off possibly are the unique graphics and those are i believe like you know numbered everyone is a well <laughs> as its name would suggest a unique graphic um there is you know milling uh to it there's specific anodization and coloring to it and the unique graphic ones kind of <laughs> in my opinion give them kind of you know a cheapy little feel visually speaking of course that's it's very subjective and you know it's not really that big of a deal but i believe like this is if, if you're really after a chris reeve knife and you want to get the most amount of experience for your money just pursue and chase one of the plain jane ones it's it's all you really need the only thing i could say about the other ones that have the inlays um 
it's just a little bit more filling in hand but even though this is nice and smooth everything is well rounded off there are no sharp corners to this that are you know unnecessary everything is well rounded um i will say that the the ones with inlays are just a little bit wider in hand so the the use experience will probably just be a little bit better uh not by much not day and night but if you're willing to get spend a little bit more it's about what like 60 to 80 dollars more for an inlaid version for like the cheapest inlay material the cheapest material that they work with is micarta and then uh i think maybe at one point they might have done g10 i'm not 100 percent sure but they have micarta they do like box elder and ebony wood um end cut carbon fiber and they also have done like standard weave, weave carbon fiber but my card is probably going to be the most affordable inlay material that they work with but if you don't care for inlays you don't like the look in particular then this is the one for you and if this is something that you really are pursuing i think you're going to enjoy it quite a bit just you got to be willing to bite the bullet because it's a lot of money once you get it in hand you'll be happy that you have it but you'll probably understand what i'm saying when it doesn't feel like a you know over six hundred dollar knife so that's it that's my ramble that's all i have to say about this thing i love it it's a wonderful addition to my collection it's here to stay for a good bit of time i uh, definitely not afraid of using it I definitely don't abuse my knives that's for sure um but yeah that is uh that's pretty much it if you guys like this video go ahead and leave a like down below if you are subscribed thank you so much i appreciate all your support and your patience of course if you are not subscribed please consider subscribing because I play more videos and content coming guys this way. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.